And for those of you who I have not met personally or are new to our CSA and our farm, uh, my name is Leslie Weiser and I'm the farmer behind Radical Family Farms. And I am so excited about this whole cooking series that Linda Esposito, um, a food consultant and friend of the farm and personal friend put together for our CSA. Um, she was so kind to, to do this. She looked at our entire crop plan and uh, came up with monthly cooking classes based on the seasonality of our harvest. So I, that is just amazing. And to have her expertise and her knowledge um, around the produce that we're growing is really going to bring, in my hopes, the, the produce that we're growing into your home's full circle in terms of identity farming and heritage cooking. So thank you, Linda. I am going to go ahead and um, let you get started. And if anybody has any questions from me, um, about the box, just we, maybe we can do that as we go or at the end. Great. Well, thanks, Leslie. Thanks for giving me uh, the opportunity to do this. This is so exciting. When I first found Radical Farms, I was so excited to find some of these vegetables that I grew up eating that are clean. And I think that was so important for me. Um, you know, one of the reasons I stopped eating it and I actually even did not even introduce it to my children is because, you know, the ones that you find in the grocery store are not clean. And to have actually the, the vegetables that are clean, this makes me really, really happy um, to have that continuation of, you know, um, the heritage. So, um, yeah, so today we're going to do stir fry. I'm Malaysian Chinese. So a lot of these dishes are pretty much Chinese based. We have a Sichuanese dish, mostly Southern Chinese, um, very Hakka based, you know, using some of the ingredients from, you know, the Hakka culture. And then um, over the course of this, the CSA season, we're going to introduce other cultures as well. Um, uh, you know, Henry, who's also on the call here, uh, he's going to teach some of the Taiwanese ways of using some of the vegetables coming up from the farm. And then we also have Adrian who will be teaching us some of um, Japanese ways of uh, fermentation. We're going to have Brett who will be teaching us uh, Korean approach to fermentation. And then into um, uh, we'll be teaching us, you know, how to make dips and salads with some of the uh, Southeast Asian Thai herbs that uh, Leslie and Sarah plants. So it is really exciting. You're kind of like going through the whole Asian region, but we are actually dedicating focus on each of the countries and the heritage of it. So not just kind of like a blanket Asian, um, uh, but you know, just kind of like focusing uh, a lot more on like what the culture does. Another reason why I do this is I've been with the CSA for the last two years and I, like her box is so generous. I always end up with so much vegetables that <laughs> I was like, okay, how do you go through all these vegetables and, you know, eat it? So, um, you know, the whole idea is like giving you guys tips, easy tricks in this hour. We're going to do four dishes um, so that, you know, when you get that box, you, you know, you will, you will not have um, what people say, CSA, CSA fatigue or something like that. Like you don't know what to do with it. This way you have creative ideas um, that you could use uh, to, you know, finish up your box so that the next time it comes around, your fridge is empty and you're ready for more vegetables. Okay, so four dishes that we are doing today. Um, the thing I think uh, Leslie is known for is her saltus. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's kind of like celery and lettuce, saltus, which is this animal over here. It's not really an animal, but it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it looks very uh, ancient, prehistoric vegetable, but it is just one of the most lovely, lovely vegetables I've ever encountered. It was a mysterious mystery to me. I didn't grow up with this vegetable, actually. Um, for many, many years, uh, until maybe a few years ago, when someone actually told me what its name was. And since then, it has been this, you know, illusionary, elusive vegetable until uh, Leslie came around. So anyway, so we're going to cook with saltus. 
and it comes, uh, well, we're gonna cook one dish with the stem and one dish with the leaves. Another thing that I, um, you know, would like to make sure that, you know, um, you know, I would like to encourage is trying to eat as much of the plant as possible. I also plant some vegetables and I know how much effort it takes to plant something like this. I mean, for me, this is like my prize for the whole year. One item, right? It's really, really difficult. So you really, really want to eat everything, okay? So we're gonna do a dish with the vegetable top, with the leafy top, which in Chinese, you can go to a, a Chinese store and they call this a Thai, a vegetable. So this is a vegetable, and then this is seltus, which in Chinese is also called uh, wasun, which is also called, um, uh, Chinese asparagus, asparagus lettuce. So you get the hint. It, it's very similar to asparagus, also come up with the same season as asparagus. So there's one item that we're doing. The, this will be fried with furu, uh, fuyi, which is fermented tofu curd, all right, which you'll see here, fermented tofu curd, all right. So lettuce leaves with fermented tofu curd and rings of red chili. So if you have red chili, you can just cut it into rings like this, okay? My knife is not very sharp. I should get the sharper knife, okay? And then, so that's one dish, all right? Let me get my sharper knife. I have my TV knife, which is my sharper knife, and then that's the one I use at home. Um, and then, so that's one dish. And the second dish is um, the, the stem. We're gonna break it down and we're gonna stir fry this in uh, julienne steaks with uh, Sichuan peppercorn and dried peppers. So this method is very Sichuanese, it's a quick stir fry. You can use red or green Sichuan peppercorn. Green is just younger. I'm looking forward to the end of the summer where Leslie says that she's planting um, fresh citron peppercorn, which I've never worked with before. So I'm really, really excited. But I have here some dry green citron peppercorn. And then we're going to cook that with the salted stem. And then we're going to do um, a classic stir fry, which is uh, using yu chai. I think some of you guys might have received yu chai in your, in your, uh, in your box last week. It's, um, you know, uh, they call it flowering cabbage. Uh, there's flowers and it's delicious. Um, again, this is also, I think all the things that we're using today um, is, um, is uh, brassicas, all right? And Leslie can talk more about the genome of, the, of these vegetables, but they are all in the same cabbage family. So this is, sometimes they call it flowery cabbage. Sometimes you can't see it in like dim sum places, the whole stock uh, being braised and served with oyster sauce. It's called choy sum, chai sin. And that this one, we're just gonna do a stir fry with garlic, smashed garlic and a slice of ginger and capturing all the wok hay that we could possibly get. And the last one we're gonna do is, the, is this, um, what we call leafy mustard, or um, we call this um, bamboo mustard sometimes. Uh, in Chinese, there are two types of mustard. There is a head mustard, and then there is, uh, what do you call this, the leafy one? Bolted? I, I don't know what you call that. Um, <laughs> leaf leafy mustard. mustard. It did yeah, flower. Leaf mustard. All right. Yeah. So, leafy mustard. Yeah. So in Chinese, there's this one is used for stir fry, and you use the leaves. The head mustard, you don't use the leaves. Um, you just use the stem. So now this one comes in early summer, and the head mustard comes uh, late summer. And uh, this has a little bit of bitterness to it. It's really, um, you know, uh, peppery. And, um, and you can also pickle it. When it's pickled, you, it's known as um, snow vegetable, all right? Whereas the hit mustard, when it's pickled, it's known as ham choy, uh, sian chai, uh, which is the, the salted mustard pickle that uh, many of uh, the Asian Chinese diaspora folks grew up with. So this is, um, this is uh, 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 I think it's called bamboo mustard. Um, uh, in Mandarin, it's called sui li hong, all right? And then in Cantonese, it's called jok choy, all right? And so that's one, two, three, four. That's four dishes. 
So it's um, 5.43 now. We're gonna spend a few minutes just kind of like prepping everything. And then after that, I'm gonna move my camera over to the stove where you'll see me, you know, cooking it. And then we'll talk about uh, what cake. So let's start with um, the Celtus first, all right? So let's break this, this puppy down. I already cut off the stem. It has a little bit of milk. What you want to look for is exactly like this, fat, okay, fat. I mean, you don't get a choice. You get it in the box, you know? But, but um, you know, if you have to ever shop for this, you know, fat is good, all right? And um, you don't want it to be too bruised up or, you know, if you go to the Chinese store, they're all rusted up. There's nothing like this green that you can see, all right? So this is fresh from the farm. So you just kind of like take a sliver out of it as little as you can. And you just want to take off this uh, outer skin, which is bitter. So, you know, um, I just kind of like cut it into two and then just, you know, run your knife through it, just like that. I also save broccoli stem and mask it like Celtius during the winter when Celtius is not available. All right. I first ran into this vegetable in a restaurant in Hong Kong, and I still remember which table I was sitting and I was eating it. I was like, what is this vegetable? And the woman just couldn't tell me. She just said, Jade, Jade. I was like, what Jade, you know? So for about 10 years, I had no idea what vegetable it was. I didn't even know what to look for because it was all beautifully sliced up. And I was just looking for Jade you know? And so um, only recently I, I discovered the name and made association that that beautiful vegetable that I ate on this, in this restaurant on Elgin Street in Lan, up above Lan Kwai Fong in Hong Kong was Celtius. So it is definitely um, one of the, my more favorite vegetable. Uh, more. And really, I think it's because of this vegetable and then to coming soon to your box is, um, your um, uh, Tang Ho, which really, you know, makes me, really for me defines uh, radical farms. So here you go, you know, it's flat, you know, I'm just going to make little julienne. So cut into planks, about quarter inch planks. All right. And I'm just going to stack them and then cut into long sticks. All right. Since we are all eating at home, I'm not going to square it off like any fancy chef, you know. Um, we're just going to eat everything possible, okay? So this Celtus is really wonderful. Um, it's, I don't know, people say, oh, you know, what does it taste like? It's, it's like a combination of cucumber, zucchini, celery, uh, you know. <laughs> it's not like a distinct flavor. So people who like bold flavor would probably not enjoy, not be crazy over it. But if you love bold, um, delicate flavor. This is a wonderful, wonderful um, vegetable. And you can eat it, you can turn it into a salad. You can eat it raw. I often have it raw and just lightly toss with like a lemon oil. Um, or um, you can also um, cook with. So when we're cooking today, we're actually going to cook it just ever so lightly. Okay. So so this is the Celtus. If you're cooking along, I hope you can catch up. I'm actually doing moving real slowly. If you slice it, it's just a beautiful presentation. You can slice it. But because the diameters are kind of, you know, awkward, I find slicing um, it uh, round-wise is um, a little difficult to get the uniform look. So I always uh, end up... Uh, Julian thing them. So this is how you Julian. All right. So cut it up, blanket. All right. Look at that. Doesn't this look like a plate of jade? That's what it was. That's what I was eating at that restaurant in Hong Kong. And it was stir fried with some Sichuan chili oil. And it was just the most refreshing dish I've seen. So this is the Celtus um, that we will cook with the red peppers and um, some of the fermented bean curd. Fermented bean curd is just tofu and you can make your own. I, I, when I make it, I, I, I just coat it with koji, uh, the rice koji, koji shou, a lot of salt. I sometimes pour in some tito vodka and then I just let it sit in my fridge for about half a year. It becomes fermented tofu. But if not, 
You can also buy it in a jar. If you ever want to buy it in a jar, look for the twins, Liu Ma Gay, Red Bean Curd from Hong Kong. It is really wonderful. In Hong Kong, I don't understand. This costs about $20 in Hong Kong. But here, it costs $2. It's very, I don't know why it's so cheap here. OK, so that is one dish. And then we'll cook it all at the same time. The another dish is the yu chai. For the yu chai, you can either, if your, if your yu chai is tender uh, and small, you can use it whole. But typically, you know, um, in our American plate, it's hard to cut this vegetable. So I would just cut it into like two inch lengths for the stem. And then I leave the root, the, I, would, I leave the, veg, the leaves aside. So I have stems and then the leaves. What we're gonna do is we're gonna blanch this real quick in some um, uh, hot water. So you can get the hot water going. And then we're just gonna stir fry and drain that. So that's a method where you're kind of like pre-cooking it a little. And lastly, uh, the mustard. So the mustard, this is again, it's the uh, bamboo mustard, the leaf mustard. So you can use both the leaves and the, um, and the, uh, you can use both the leaves and the, uh, and the stem, okay? I am saving some because I'm gonna pickle a little bit of it, all right? It's, the, the snow mustard goes really well with century eggs. So for mustard, because the stem is pretty thick, you wanna slice it at a diagonal like this, okay? And you wanna slice it thin about like, you know, again, three eight or half an inch thickness. And then the leaves, you can just do like one inch. You hold I keep watching. I my Okay. So that is the the leaf must uh, the the bamboo mustard. I love uh, pairing mustard with chili. Um, it takes on a lot of bold flavors. So this one we're gonna pair it with um dried shrimp that I have rehydrated. So this is what the dried shrimp look like, okay? And then this is the rehydrated version, all right? And then we are going to put in some Thai chilies. It's really spicy. I don't like too spicy food. So what I do I, to get some of the heat, I just make a little cut in the middle, okay? To let the oils out, but not really being able to eat into it. All right, so um, the last thing I wanted to do, oh yeah, and the, and the shrimp, you can just you know, give it a quick run through. You can have it fully, you know, full shrimp, that's fine too, but, but that's what it is. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is um, uh, gin, uh, garlic and ginger, okay? Half my family is vegetarian, so I have to like rinse my thing. Okay. So the last thing I wanted to talk to you about before we go to stir fry is um, garlic and ginger. Very important for stir fry, especially for Chinese vegetables. Um, it just is the aromatics, you know, when you talk about aromatics, you know, garlic is what it is. So head of garlic, I don't think you plant garlic, right? So we, um, we are, there are a couple of ways for stir frying. If it's high heat stir fry, you want the garlic whole. So to break down a head of garlic into cloves, I just take most of it, put my weight on it. Sometimes it breaks, sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time it does, except Okay, so it's sort of breaking. Yep, see that? So you get, I'll break it all into heads and then I will peel it, put it in a jar and then I have garlic for the rest of the week. Um, okay, so that's how, and then if you want to peel it, the easiest way to peel the garlic to me is I just cut off with the butt of my knife. I take off a little bit of it. I use the back, the spine of my knife, give it a small bang, and then just peels right off. Okay. So, um, okay, it peels right off. So, for garlic, sometimes if you're doing high heat stir fry, you want it 
in a large piece. So you just want to kind of like give it a little smash, just, you know, so that it doesn't burn. But all, this, all the fragrance and all the oils are released. But sometimes you might want to mince it, okay? All right. In some recipes, you want to mince it, like some of the recipes that uses the furu, it's wetter, it's not so high heat. So to mince it, you peel it, and then using the tip of your knife, making little tips, like um, little slices of cuts in it, turn it 90 degrees, make a one slice, and then just slice right through it. And then you have all these little mince pieces, really easy. And then just run your knife through it, there you go. You're not fighting with the garlic. Obviously, I've minced the rest that I need for the rest of the day. So there you go. So that is the mise that we are. Oh, the the Celtus leaves. Remember, we cut off the head. There's a rampant. I'm sorry, this is a rampant one. Celtus leaves. Okay. So here's your Celtus leaves. All right. Just like any lettuce, you know, you, I love cooking iceberg lettuce. You just cut it into big chunks, maybe like three inches chunks, just like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave this in the board. It's just gonna shrink, okay. All right, so what else do we have here? Okay, that's it. Going through the whole bucket of vegetables. Any questions so far? You have a Any question? question? No question? All right. So in that case, we will start cooking. It will be done in like 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. It's um okay. So let's talk about what's okay. Wait, um, Linda, Linda, so Maggie, did you have a question? Yeah, we were wondering, um, we don't have the dried salted shrimps, but we have this. Can we use this instead? Okay, let's me see what is this. It's salted shrimp sauce. It's like Korean salted shrimp sauce. I think you can do that. The whole idea is that it's just to <laughs> add some umami into your, into your food, you know? I would say you can add salted cod. I don't know, it's, uh, bonito flakes, you know, it's just to add some umami into it. And if you're a vegetarian, you can add some, you know, kombu liver or like some sliced mushroom. Okay. Ooh, thank you. Any other question? So again, this is all very, very Chinese. So we have like some Southern Chinese and some Sichuanese. So I call that Western Chinese um, approach to the food and um, some of the Hakka Chinese. Um, approach to the food as well. Okay, so um, well, uh, let's go back to the walk. So you guys see my walk. Um, well, I don't really have a walk. I my walk is downstairs, and I realized that my walk has walks at the bottom, which it tends to, and so it doesn't sit nice on my um on my uh, uh stove top. My stove top is electric. So if you have an electric stove top, you want a flat bottom walk. If you have a gas stove top then you can afford to have a rounded bottom wok. The nice thing about a wok is that it has a lot of surface, okay? Um, you can, you can, um, you know, you will cook, the hottest part is, is right in the middle. And when you're cooking, you can push your items as they cook to the side so that, um, so that they're not overcooked or burnt. And then you can cook some other things and then in the end you toss it all together. So that's the thing about the wok. The nice thing also about the, 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 the anatomy of the wok is that when you are you know, heating up the oil, okay, um, and you're trying to capture what we call the wok hay, the oil, what it happens to get wok hay is that the oil um, kind of breaks down into different you know, oil polymers in the middle. And you know, when you add your vegetable that has a lot of water content in it, it starts to vaporize those polymers, it starts to fly out. And those are the, where the deliciousness is. So you want to capture uh, the wok. So once you put the vegetable in, it goes psh, And then so you want to kind of like get a cover already to capture those evaporating polymers of uh, fragrant oil uh, and capture it back into the pot and almost like smoking your vegetable. 
So what people say is, what is wok hei? Is that kind of like sing, singed smell of oil, singed, smoky. It's, a, it's very difficult to explain, but it really gives you that kind of deliciousness. So the idea is that it gets really hot, the oil hits, it starts to break down, you add water, it starts to vaporize, you capture it with a, with a cover, and there you go, that's it. As simple as that, okay? And then another thing, so that's what, hey, another thing about vegetable cooking is that when you cook, once you cover it, you don't wanna cover it for too long. The longer you cover it, then it starts to turn color and your vegetable is no longer bright green. It will become this dull olive color. You wanna eat with your eyes too. So you wanna make sure that it's bright green. So once, you, once the action dies down, you take it off, put the vegetable in. So just say your, you know, your dining companion is late. Don't cover it, leave it uncovered so that it remains green. And if you need to reheat it, reheat it just before eating, okay? Don't keep it covered because it will turn like this ugly, ugly green. Uh, Linda, Linda, we have a question. That happens to me, now I know why it's always brown but anyway <laughs> what is the best oil to use in stir fry and oh that's a great question um what the the oil that you know stir fry gets up to pretty high temperature i don't know it's like upwards of 400 500 uh, 400 degrees so you want an oil that um that has a high heat point so i at home i use rice bran oil and um uh, yeah, I use rice bran oil and that, that you know, helps to, um, to uh, uh, I mean, uh, that's what I use. Other oils that you can use is um, canola oil, soy oil, vegetable oil, something that's not really uh, very free, uh, uh, distinctive in flavor. Some people use peanut oil, that's fine too. I find that the, the taste is very strong. Um, and some people use avocado oil, that's fine too, okay? Just don't use extra virgin olive oil, save that for your salad. All right, so I'm gonna change my camera over to my wok, all right? And I'm gonna start by cooking the mustard first, the, I mean, not the mustard, the yu chai first, all right, since my water is ready. So the first thing, and I, I did ask you guys to, um, to put a pot of water to boil, right? So I'm just gonna blanch. All right. I have like a sand bag for my camera. Can you guys? All right, just don't slip over. All right. Just a second. All right, what can you see? All right. So here's my water, and I'm just gonna blanch the stem of the of the yu chai first, okay? And this is just water. I should have added a little bit of salt to it, okay? Okay. And blanching is just you know putting it in there for you know I don't know half a minute maybe, All right? Can you see it? Yeah. So you can see that the minute it turns a deeper green, your blanching is done, all right? Okay. So I'm going to remove the stems. Okay, I have this, I have this um, stove that doesn't have a lot of power. <laughs> it's forever to cook. My uh, building association doesn't allow gas. So, there we go. so you see it's a bit deeper green. And then I'm just going to put in the vegetable to blanch. All right. This is the yu chai. Other vegetables that you can do this same recipe or treatment is, um, you know, like the tops of the radish that you got today. You can do that too the tops of the beans that you'll get, uh, bok choy, uh, you know, pretty much any green leafy vegetables, you can use the same treatment. This is pretty much done. I'm going to, you know, again, put this on my thing to drain. So this is done. 
This also removes, this makes it tender. And therefore when you're cooking, you don't have to cook for a long time. Okay. And the, so the blanching is done and I'm done with the water. Okay, so now I'm gonna start heating up the woks. So there are different kinds of wok. So while the wok is heating, I'm gonna talk about the wok. This wok that I have here is a cast iron stove perfect pen. It's not a wok, but it's so, um, it, to me, it functions like a wok. It is, um, so it's cast iron, so it's obviously it's gonna take a while to heat up. So there, this, there's the cast iron version. So I think Le Cruzette also sells a wok that's cast iron. I think Stoke also sells a wok that's also cast iron. But I think the preferred woks are uh, made from carbon steel. So there's a few carbon steel because they're lighter. If you go to like the wok shop on Grant uh, and, and um, Stockton, no, Grant and, yeah, Grant and Stockton maybe? I don't know, uh, on Grant Avenue, um, maybe Grant and Jackson. Um, they sell all sorts of wok and you can spend like $20 and get a really great wok, okay? So, um, so that's, um, so I'm just gonna put the video here. So um, if you are looking at gallery view, you can see both of me. Um, so uh, the, the, the walk, you know, um, should, be, should be, you know, uh, made from some sort of uh, iron and steel so that it conducts heat the best. So carbon steel uh, is a great heat conductor and therefore, you know, it cooks, it heats up really fast, okay? The nice thing about the cast iron woks is that it retains the heat longer, um, you know, when you are cooking. But just, I guess you just work with what you have. Um, you can also do this really in a pan, like a deep skillet, um, if you don't want to go out and buy a new stove. So I always kind of like put my hand here and see like, oh, is it hot enough, is it hot enough? Um, there are various ways to, you know, kind of like test, test uh, your, your pan to see whether it's hot. Um, one way is just putting water in. If it sizzle or when it comes to a ball, then it's hot enough. So what are we doing now? We are actually, oh, um, I forgot about the ginger. We need three slices of ginger for this dish, all right? So any of the stir fry, I usually put three uh, uh, slices of ginger. I don't even bother to peel it because it's really for the flavor, not so much for eating. So I have three slices of ginger. I have the smashed garlic, okay? Smashed garlic and three slices of ginger for your um, vegetable. All right, so you time with ginger and garlic. Three cloves of garlic, three slices of ginger, all right. Linda, hmm? do you peel your ginger? I don't peel my ginger. Like I said, I it's only for the flavor and not so much for the aesthetic. Sometimes I don't even peel my garlic. Like now, you know, you can just put the whole thing in. All right. All right, so I'm peeling. I've got three slices of ginger and hopefully my phone doesn't melt, okay. So my oil is hot. I can see it smoking. All right, so I'm gonna put, and there's my vegetable. Okay, so my vegetable is going to go in first. See that? All right, and then, nice and smoky, you see it nice and smoky. So you can already smell the ginger and the garlic. Once the ginger and the garlic reaches your nose, you know you're ready. Okay. All right. And where is my cover? All right. Stems goes in first, followed by the vegetable. Cover. Okay. All right. I can smell it. Wish I could let you guys smell this. So now it's just smoking in there. All right. I'm not even going to add water. I think my recipe might ask you to add a little bit of water on the side. I'm not going to do that. And then I'm just going to add that yeast moisture that came up on the pan. 
All right. So you see how dry it is and how wonderfully fresh it is? And then just kind of like sprinkle on some salt. Voila, you're done. Okay. It has now absorbed all the flavors. And it's done. So we want to take this out. So the learning here is that you want to hit the stems first. So that gives it a head start. Okay. And then the and then the leaves. And it's a pretty dry dish. Really well. All right. All right. So, shall we move on to the second dish? Okay. So, here's your first dish. All right. Done. All right. Second dish. We're going to cook the seltzers with um, the Sichuan peppercorn. Just going to use the same pan. Okay. All right. So we have um, sliced seltzers, stems, oil, red peppers, okay, citron peppercorn, and some salt, okay? So first we're going to heat up the pan with some oil. The pan is already hot, okay? Any questions so far? All right, so I'm gonna put the peppercorn and the chili spice in there. So there is, um, this is actually adapted from a traditional Sichuan dish that uses um, potatoes, like, sh you know, shoestring potatoes and, and um, cook the same way, crunchy. It should remain crunchy. So now I can see the smoke. I can smell the spice, it goes in. Oh, I had the round piece, oh, it goes in. Okay. Right. Cover, cover a little bit. Okay. A little bit of salt. And you're done. So you want to taste it? Hmm. I can really taste the, the numbingness of the citron peppercorn and the mang la. Let me need a bit of salt, come on. It has lost the greenness of the, of the vegetable and I am done. So I take this away, it looks nicer. How's everybody catching up? Peppercorn shouldn't be burned, so because otherwise it'll be bitter. You're just imparting that mala flavor from the peppercorn over to the seltzers. Okay, so this is really the dish that that I remembered that introduced me to the seltzers um, way back in I don't know year two thousand. All right, second dish. All right. So now, of course, my dish has uh, my pan has that mala flavor. So I'm just gonna wipe it down. I'm gonna wash it. What shall we cook next? 
Let's cook the furu one first. So there's a citron dish, there's a southern Chinese dish. Now we're going to cook the furu, where we are going to, um, the aromatics here is the furu and uh, chili and garlic, as well as, um, and then we're going to cook, um, uh, what you got it? Um, the a tie with it, which is the leaves of the citra of the Celtic leaves. All right, let's get it hot again. Hey, Linda, no. mm -hmm. we do have a, a question from Anna. Um, mm -hmm. Do blanched vegetables need ice water after? No, that's a very Western way. <laughs> 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 no, I don't. I mean, I don't. Uh, maybe I'm not. Maybe it's just me, who knows, but. Right. So here, you don't really need high heat for this one. So once it's warmed up, you want to put in two cloves of minced garlic, okay? All right, and then you can start adding your puru in it. It's going to platter. And you want to smash it, put in your chili. Whoa, not this guy. Okay, it's gonna smell good. Then you're gonna add the vegetable in. So your aromatic is all the furu. Again, this is not like a high heat vegetable, uh, high heat cooking, not like a high heat stir fry. Not all stir fry needs to be, you know, crazy high heat. This is about just, you know, cooking it down. And I'm just gonna add some water to it. Sometimes I add the liquid from the furu from the bottle which is very flavorful. And the food and the and the you know fuyi or furu has um has a lot of salt so you might want to taste it before you start salting it. So again one thing to look for is that the vegetable turn a deeper green. See that? And it's done. So now, turn off the heat when it's just about to turn a deeper green, the continuous heat will continue to cook it. So, I'm gonna taste it. It kills me when Leslie tells me that some of the restaurants she supplies to only wants the stem and not the leaves, you know? It's like, why waste it? Okay. So this is a method of cooking with um, the fermented tofu. It's great with any watery vegetables. So later in the summer, you'll be getting like water spinach. You'll be getting, I don't know, if you have too much lettuce, any lettuce, you can do that. And so this is. There you go. Is that beautiful? Mm. I already made some white rice. And I'm just going to give uh, my pan a quick clean now. Just because uh, the next one is just because it's a bit messy here. <laughs> so, pardon me while I rinse my pan. I don't have one of those bamboo, you know, scrubber scrubber thingy. I should get myself one of them. Actually, I, might, I probably do somewhere in my storage. Here we go, we're back. I'm gonna just kind of like wipe it dry. Always clean as you go. Okay, what is our last item? Our last item is the mustard, the, the bamboo mustard. Um, and we are going to cook that with uh, dried shrimp. 
and Thai chilies. We're gonna balance it off the bitterness of the mustard with um, some sugar and some salt. Okay. So here we go again. Hot. So you see when you um, when you have everything mees, you know, cut and place uh, in place, it makes cooking so easy, right? It's all organized. So that's why it's like for uh, Asian cooking, uh, being very organized in terms, well, I'm not being very organized here, what am I saying? But just, just kind of like, you know, having everything at hand's reach because everything is going so fast. Okay, this one, we're going to put in the, the uh, dried shrimp. Had some vegetable left over from my cutting. So I'm just gonna put in the dried shrimp and cook it a little bit with some oil. All right. The dried shrimp is a bit salty. And when you cook it, it goes from being very fishy to being a very sweet smell. Okay. So it's cooking and cooking away. Now that it looks, whoa, it looks a bit crispy. I'm going to add the garlic. Okay. The fried garlic and the sliced chili. Cook it so it's fragrant. And this is going to get the, so the garlic is turning golden. And I'm going to add the vegetable in. Okay. This one again is uh, a bit slow cooking, not, not like a quick stir fry. It's gonna kind of like get some liquid. So you saw how I put the liquid from the side to use the heat so that it, it boils the liquid as it goes down and create that steam. Okay. I'm gonna season it with a little bit of sugar just to balance off the spiciness and the um, and the saltiness and then just a little a small touch of salt. So this is going to be a bit bitter, which is a real wonderful flavor. Okay. And pretty much is, uh, you wanna wait, then you wanna taste it. Need a little bit more salt. Very spicy. Okay. And I am done. Where is my... All right, so here we are. Here we go, one, two, three, four. Okay. How's that? Something like that. <laughs> Oh my God, I wish I cooked along with you, Linda. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, you know. That looks and so we, good and so bright. All of my vegetables are never that bright. So it's about speed and getting ready, right? You know?
so yeah so if anybody has any question um yeah you can make dinner really really fast and look at the amount of vegetable i started with and you know it's all going to be gone by in a half an hour with a <laughs> nice bowl of white rice yeah so does anyone have any questions Oh, yeah, just keeping it green, keeping it fresh, keeping it crunchy. Chinese food is all about the texture, right? The flavor, the texture. Um, you know, these are four really, really different flavor profile. You know, some really salty, you know, um, some bitter, um, you know, some has that spicy mala taste. Um, and they're all crunchy, I mean, I mean yeah, keeping it crunchy is very, very important. <laughs> I can't stress it enough. <laughs> so yeah, um, all of you guys are in, you know have a big treat. I mean, every two weeks you're gonna get a wonderful box, and you can use you know any of these um, approach to to work with any of those vegetables as long as it's leafy or if it's stemmy or if it's bitter. You know, you can work with it. And, um, you know, hopefully kind of like expand your, you know, cooking repertoire. And then the next class will talk about cooking with tofu and cooking with, you know, pairing with tofu with, I mean, vegetable with tofu and vegetable with um, uh, eggs. And then we also talk about using dried vegetables and, you know, uh, pickling it and all sorts of stuff. So you, you will be very, very healthy this year. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you linda somebody yeah. katie has a question if one of our greens is looking a little wilty because we took too long to cook it do you still rec recommend stir fry or maybe something else so if it sat in the fridge for a little too long and it's wilting it's fine you can stir fry it yeah it's okay. perfect actually just uh, stir fry shorter good yeah, you can see, you remember that hit of um, the hit from the Celtus? It just reduces this amount. Sometimes when the box arrives and my fridge is full, you know, being or, or you know, an online cooking chef at home, I my fridge is always full. I sometimes have to cook it up in order to fit it all in. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, sometimes I pickle it so that it can stand room temperature. Yeah. All right, does anybody have any questions for me or for Linda? Linda, thank you so much. So if you're not following Linda on Instagram, she is Flavor Explosions. And underscore she, explosion. <laughs> what is it? Flavor underscore explosions. <laughs> Flavor underscore explosions, yeah. Instagram. And then she is always giving classes at 18 Reasons. So we are so lucky to have her um, work with our CSA. We're in for an awesome treat. And I've learned so much from you. Linda, so it'll be good to be able to cook my own vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it, you know, one hour. Yeah, that's all you need. Yeah. yeah, great. Yeah. And your okay. vegetables come so clean. I don't even have to clean much of it. No. Yeah, good. Yeah. good. Right. yeah, and that said, I mean, we do encourage everyone to wash and inspect their vegetables before eating because we do we do hydro cool and wash, but we want everyone to do their own washing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do, but it's not as if like, you know, I'm tearing off like, you know, dirt and things like that. So yeah. it was, I mean, it was literally, you know, prep time for washing was like five minutes, you know. That's great. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions before we head off? Okay. Thank Great. you very much. All right. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. See you next month. Okay. Right. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Andrew, you can stay on.